Elizabeth of Bohemia was a princess. That sounds great. Except she was born in 1618 in Heidelberg, Germany. This was at the start of the Thirty Years' War, one of the most devastating and brutal wars in history. She was a granddaughter of the King of England and Scotland, and one of her forebears was the King of Denmark. That's Sarah Hutton, a visiting professor at the University of York. And I have a great interest in women philosophers, especially those of the 17th century. So we're in the right time period and on the right show. Elizabeth was educated more or less the same as her brothers, but she, from a very early age, was obviously very intelligent, very studious. Um, they spoke many languages and she spoke them best of all. Um, and she was known among her siblings as La Grecque, which means the Greek, because she studied classical languages. As a woman, Elizabeth grappled with personal sorrow and the struggle to pursue philosophy. The title, Elizabeth of Bohemia, arises from the fact that her, her father rather unwisely accepted to be elected king of what is now Czech Republic, Bohemia. But this led to wars and he was um, overthrown very quickly and his own lands in Germany were overrun um, and he had to flee with his family and they lived in um, exile in the Netherlands for all of Elizabeth's upbringing. The Thirty Years' War, that was uh, everybody's mind. That's Eric Jan Boos, a postdoc at the Erasmus School of Philosophy in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. The whole of Western Europe suffered from this terrible war, which waged primarily in the German countries, and Austria, Hungary, Poland, it was a terrible war. Of course, most people know Elizabeth from the letters she exchanged with René Descartes beginning in 1643. She was very important for Descartes' own philosophical development, in a way. She enticed answers from Descartes, which he didn't give anyone. To put it another way, he wrote her letters he didn't write to anyone else. On topics, he didn't discuss in that detail with anyone else. In 1667, Elizabeth became an abbess, the head of a convent where Quakers, Labadists, and other Protestant sects could find refuge. Her final days were spent in Hereford as Hereford Abbess. Sabrina Ebersmeyer is a professor of philosophy at the University of Copenhagen. She says that as Elizabeth was facing death, religion became more important to her. She became sick, people tried to cure her, and she became engaged in a letter exchange on religious matters. Unfortunately, she decided also to burn all her papers um, before she died, um, thinking that all this worldly fame and glory that was based on her earlier exchanges with famous philosophers, that that was just not worthwhile uh, stay in front of, of God in the end. But luckily, we do have her correspondence with Descartes. And for people like Ebersmeyer, reading those letters is uplifting. With all this hostility towards intellectual women and all these problems she was facing, she still managed, you know, to express her thought um, and come up with very original and very interesting arguments that still uh, inspire uh, today people <laughs> to think more about. Ebersmeyer says that in Germany, where she's from, Elizabeth has always been kind of famous as a historical figure. But in the last few decades, she's come to be known as a philosopher, a princess living and thinking in tough times. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Holly J. McDeed.